All right, so today I want to talk about practical destructuring and how you can use destructuring in combination with promises and the array methods to really make your code a lot more efficient. So I've got here an array of objects called people. You can see it's an array, series of four objects inside. Here's another array with some numbers. The Array methods like map, filter, the ones that are immutable, the ones that will return a new array. So map, filter, reduce, even for each, it doesn't return a new array, but loops through them. With these methods, what you're doing is you're taking a function, passing it into the map method. It's going to give you back three things. For every single element in the array, it's going to give you the element itself, its index, and a reference to the original array. So here you can see I'm running this and it's just looping through and writing out those things. It's the same as if this were a for each. I'm not making any changes to the data to create the new one. I'm not accepting a new array back from this, but I'm just looping through it. Now, if I were to do the same thing with this people array, so we can say, something like this. Looping through it, now it's going to return to me a new array, so we could say something like that. You know, this is the new array returned by map, this is the new array returned by map. Here, this argument, instead of it being a single value like here, this is actually an object. So we've got the object that contains ID, name, PhD, and partner. And if you want to use that inside here, we can do things like this. We could say console.log, and I want to write out person.name. Okay, fair enough, you can do that. But it does mean that you're having to use person in front of every single thing that you're writing out or every single value that you're using inside this function. What we can do instead is, instead of just having that person inside there, what's being passed in is an object. And this is where destructuring comes in. I'm going to put my curly braces here. So it's like these curly braces represent this object. And I can extract at the same time as I'm looping through, let's say I want the name and I want the partner, just like that. So in here, if I want the name, all I have to do is use that variable name. And I could add in partner as well. Now, I'm not putting the other variables here. I'm not putting in ID or PhD. That's fine. I know I don't need them. If I wanted to, I could include them, but I'm not because I know that these are the only two things that I need right here. So if I refresh this, oh, I got to launch this again. There we go. So now we have it writing out the name and the partner for each one of these. So we're extracting it. And if you wanted to change the name, that's something else you can do with destructuring. We could say, okay, instead of partner, I want to call it PT. Instead of name, I'm just going to call it NM. And then those would be the variables that I'm going to use inside here. I'm going to say NM. I'm going to say PT, just to make it a little bit more efficient for myself. Works does the same thing. So by putting destructuring in here, we're making it a little bit more efficient. We're saving ourselves that extra step without having to write it all out. And we can do the exact same thing when we're dealing with fetch. So inside of here, I'm going to be fetching this JSON data. So I have the same array of objects just converted into JSON, saved as an external file. Uh, because I've got the server running, I can do a fetch call to this. So there we have it. That's the fetch call. It's going to be bringing back this same data. So we'll have a then where we get our response. The second then is where we're going to have our data. And this is where I'm going to use the destructuring is in this second one. So up here, console.log, same as I've been using here. And we could change that one as well. So log, just writing stuff out. Here, I'm just going to write out if there's an error, this is where I'm going to write it out. And inside of here, 
we will get our response object coming back from the fetch. And if the response is not okay, I'm going to throw a new error and we will take our response and get a status text. And that's going to be the text for our error message. So that'll come down into here. If it is, great. We're going to take our response. We know it's a JSON file. So we extract the JSON data. And that means down here, this thing that we're getting, data, this is the entire array. So it's this whole array. Whereas with the map, we were looking at it, all the individual elements. So one object after another. Down here, data is an array. So the array doesn't have the ID name PhD because it's this entire thing. However, if you think of the data, if you think of the array coming back as, hey, it's a whole bunch of records, and maybe I want to display the first two records, and maybe the last one, or just the first two, and then still have a variable that has everything else. This is where we can use destructuring and also the rest operator. So I am going to log something out here in just a minute. But instead of just having data, so we need the parentheses here. It's not an object, so we're not going to do the curly braces. It is an array, like I was saying. And there's my first two records. So A and B are going to be This is A, this is B. So these two objects are going to go into A and B. We could call it first and second. I mean, that's going to be a little bit more meaningful. So my first record, my second record, and then everything else. In this case, it's only these two records right here, but I still have one object is in my variable called first, one object in my variable called second, and then these two together, the rest operator is going to grab everything else and put it inside there. So, inside of log, I can write out first, I can write out second, and there they are. There's the first record, there's the second record. And we now have a great way to use destructuring to extract part of a record set. So if you wanted to do something like paging and only display so many records, this is how you could do it. You can extract the specific number that you want. And then right here, this would be the rest. Maybe if you wanted to save the last one, you could do this as well. And rest would take everything in, in between, just if that was something that you were trying to do. But I encourage you to get familiar with the destructuring, get familiar with the rest and spread operators, because these things really can help make your code a little bit easier to use and a little bit easier to read. All right, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.